Coming up on today's 300th episode of Airborne. Gulfstream rolls out their new G500 and G600 luxury jets. Air traffic service is fully restored at Chicago Center. And Canada's Pete McLeod wins Red Bull Air Race in Las Vegas. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Yesterday, Gulfstream Aerospace introduced an all-new family of business jets, the Gulfstream G500 and G600. The two new aircraft optimize speed, wide cabin comfort, and efficiency with advanced safety features. The G500 can fly 5,000 nautical miles at 0.85 Mach or 3,800 nautical miles at 0.90 Mach. The G600 can travel 6,200 nautical miles at 0.85 Mach or 4,800 nautical miles at 0.90 Mach. The maximum operating speed for both aircraft is 0.925 Mach. The finished cabin of each aircraft measures 91 inches wide and 74 inches tall, carrying up to 19 passengers each. The G500 has three living areas and the G600 has up to four, as well as an optional crew rest area. The fly-by-wire control system with active controlled side sticks provides tactile feedback, which means the pilot and co-pilot can see and feel each other's control inputs. The G600 flight test program is expected to begin approximately 12 to 18 months after the G500s, and entry into service is projected to be in 2019. The FAA has successfully restored full air traffic operations at the Chicago In Route Center in Aurora, Illinois. Tom Patton reports. The center suffered significant damage from a September 26th fire that was deliberately set. FAA technical teams have restored all of the critical systems and equipment at the center, and air traffic controllers resumed control of the center's airspace from adjoining centers between midnight and 1 a.m. local time Monday. During the outage, the agency says it successfully maintained high traffic volumes to and from Midway and O'Hare. The agency is conducting a 30-day review of contingency plans and security protocols for its major facilities as a result of this event. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. After these messages, the Las Vegas Red Bull Air Races face some challenges. Stay tuned. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Ben King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Pete McLeod of Canada was declared the winner of the Red Bull Air Race World Championship stop in Las Vegas on Sunday, after heavy winds forced the cancellation of the flying in the first of three final rounds. McLeod won the first race of his career by virtue of being the fastest qualifier on Saturday. Nigel Lamb of Britain moved into the overall world championship lead on the strength of his fourth straight second place finish. And Germany's Matthias Stolderer got his first podium of the year with third place. The heavy winds that gusted at speeds above 34 miles per hour toppled several of the 80-foot high pylons. 11 of the 12 pilots made it through the windswept track at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, despite a high number of penalties and mistakes. The final race of the season will be held in Spielberg, Austria on October the 25th through the 26th. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it's fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, 
and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. We're just so proud to be associated with a company like Aviation Partners Group and their president, Boris. Uh, he has done some amazing things for our, with our helicopter terrain avoidance system in areas of the world where I just cannot reach out. Terrain avoidance is important for everybody, but it's a key issue in international helicopter operations, especially when working with the UN. Sandow and APG have joined together to come up with a unique solution. Search Sandow and APG on Aero TV's news channel. The commemorative Air Force may be moving its headquarters to Dallas, Texas, but the popular Midland Air Show will stay firmly in place. Air Show Chairman Gene Leinbarger told a Midland television station that rumors that the event will be moving with the CAF to Dallas are just that, rumors. Leinbarger said that the CAF will have its own type of event in Dallas, but that, quote, Midland will continue to see the great air show we've had for the last 24 years here in Midland, end quote. Leinbarger said that next year's lineup of performers is already being established and that the community and the city council are firmly behind the event. After the break, the only thing not secret about the X-37B spacecraft is that it supposedly has landed. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Com. Welcome back. It does feel kind of reassuring that our military can actually keep a secret. Unless, of course, you don't like military secrets. The mission of the Air Force's X-37B is definitely a well-kept secret. We know it was launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida on December 11, 2012. And we know it was supposed to have landed yesterday at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. This leads us to assume that it is either a very slow vehicle that took a long time to make the trip or that it's been circling the Earth for reasons we don't know. Often described as being similar to a small version of the space shuttle, it's unmanned and generally assumed to be some sort of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance spacecraft. The fact that it can remain in space for such a long time and make a spot on landing at Vandenberg says a lot for the technology behind the X-37B. It's understood that the Air Force has two X-37B spacecraft and they have recently leased space from NASA to continue their program. The people in Washington, D.C. must have been pretty surprised to hear the sound of about 30 round engines and see a formation of World War II era AT-6 Texans flying down the Potomac River last Saturday. The Potomac flight, organized by Culpeper Air Fest, was in honor of disabled American veterans and was the first ever flyover of the Pentagon in Arlington National Cemetery. It was intended to pay tribute to the services and sacrifices veterans have made to secure our nation's freedom. The planes made the round trip Saturday from Culpeper Regional Airport. The ceremonial formation flight was visible from Alexandria, Arlington, and Roslyn, all located in Northern Virginia. Well, that's our program for October 15th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember that after the new year, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.